Hello there, no. My name is Robbie Cribbs, and I'd like to share with you some of the kinetic sculpture that I've built over the years. Woodshot. Many of these pieces have come home to roost. This one, a uh, toolbox for the lack of a better name. I would sort of imagine that it would be um, perfect uh, in a mom and pop hardware store instead of the typical bell that would go off as people walk in the door. Remember those electric eyes that they used to have? So it's got an old crank drill as uh, part of the drive mechanism. And uh, I had to carve a hammer because the, the one I started out with was just simply too heavy. And while I was at it, I gave it a slightly exaggerated head. Exaggerated head. Over here, kind of a fortune teller motif. Rear screen projection, sandblasted glass, well, mirror. This always makes me think of those old gas pumps where the little thing spun around. And above that is the motion detector. I do like infrared motion detectors. It allows a piece to lie dormant until someone approaches it. Inside here, you can almost see the tubular bells and a Tibetan, I think, prayer bell um, that are being rattled about by the mechanisms down below, which are reflecting light. And they are decorated with sculpted copper. This is a screen in this one instead of a lens, providing an alternate perspective. Here's the reflected light going through glass slides that were apparently made originally to produce microchips. Up above there, we've got a, a tape measure with a ball rolling back and forth. And down here, I call this the working man. He, um, he's a very old piece of mine, carved out of basswood. It was an experiment with uh, reusing brake cables from a bicycle shop. And inside there, there's a cam that rotates and those arms ride up and down on it, pulling the cables. His head turns left and right based on a flex cable. Some of my earliest kinetic pieces were crank powered and um, more in the interest of not having them uh, <laughs> beaten up by people. I went to using motors, but this is a return to hand powered pieces. For this piece, I made a knob that was sort of reminiscent of an old radio tuner, and I used magnets as the connecting mechanism inside. So it gives this sort of bouncy, indirect uh, quality. You're kind of searching out the, uh, the effect. It also keeps it safe from being played with too hard. Played with too hard. Saturated. This time we've got mouth opening and closing and eyes in a cage. And the slowest component is the three noses that rotate around into place. Lighting up purple nose. Saturated head. That piece with the tape measure, uh, I used to have a little globe on it, and I called it three feet of orbit. Sadly, the globe wasn't quite round enough and intended to get stuck. So down here, I've got a character that I created as a gimmick, if you will, in that he segued between short films. So I guess his kinetic existence was as an animated character. Oh yeah, the art of opening doors. I once had one, but the knob fell off. You know, I was lucky to get out of there. Yeah, story for another time. Don't want to jinx the knobs around here. So, uh, perhaps it's not so much the art of opening a door as much as what you might find behind one. So the art of opening doors was a collection of short art films. Ah, slippery. And this character, the mortar between the bricks. 
This is another uh, attempt at a very elementary kinetic piece. I was sort of playing with the idea of uh, looking back to one's youth. Well, at the other end of the spectrum, looking forward to being grown up. <laughs> I love this box. I found it empty, sadly. I would have loved to have gotten the mechanism out of it, but um, it says Edison in the back and obviously was a gramophone at one time. The piece that lives inside of it was the result of uh, my being a little stir-crazy during a power outage. I wasn't able to work on the project that I had going at the time, and so I sat down with a spool of wire, some pliers, beads, corks, and waited for the power to come on so I could see how it behaved. Now this one is called Carney in a Box, and this is just gonna be a short excerpt of a much longer audio track. <coughs> step right up, step right up. You wanna play a game? Hey, stick your head in the box. You wanna trade places? Stick your head in the box. You never mind what your mama told you. I say, step right up. Why, there's strange fun enough for everyone. That be you, you, and you. Now there's nothing to be frightened of here. Not a thing, not a thing. Just step right up. Now over here... I've got a gravity base piece, and I've done a number of these over the years using marbles. But at one show, I had several marble pieces lined up with the last one in the sequence using a ball bearing rather than a marble. So the assumption was that you were once again seeing a marble, but when it got down to the end of the track here, it actually climbed up the face of the piece on account of the mechanism being magnetic. Now this piece has EL wire that is illuminated as a result of the sound of the marble on the track. And right over here, this top piece with the words mini ha ha, also uses a ball bearing. After it drops through its first port, it flips a device that chooses the route. So this time it's gonna go to the right. Next time we'll see it go to the left. And incidentally, these wire figures that are the surface treatment here were left over from an animation that was done with wire and was a finalist in the Guggenheim YouTube Play Project under the name Learning Curve. Right below Mini Haha -ha is a piece that uh, I've always fancied it to mm, kind of like be a, a fish tank from another dimension. It's uh, meant to be a little more subtle, a little more mm, relaxing maybe. The little floating elements in this one started out as little bits of paper mache painted with acrylic and they're mounted on these little arms that pivot and ride against a spiral cam, if you will, that uh, was actually inspired by uh, an image of DNA. Alien Radio, with its aerial down below. So I was hoping to get a sense of animation out of this piece. I guess that there's only one thing I love more than a geared down motor, and that'd be lens distortion. You know, the bending of light. So I was invited to participate in a show here in Langley, which was an homage to wonderful Mr. Calder. So I made these little bodies and heads, 
kind of doing a push me pull you routine um, and filled them with steel wool and of course I always like to add a little bit of copper this one just has a simple switch no motion detector it's either on or off Now this one, I wanted it to be really pretty subtle and quiet and gentle overall. But the, the four little legs are moving along ever so slowly. And then the marble's just moving enough to keep you curious. Well, it very slowly sneaks up on you. This one has a motion detector where the green square is, and so it'll lie dormant until you approach it. And if you watch the eyes, you'll see that they slowly pan down as the mouth opens. Kind of a liquid mirror is the idea of this one. It's got his motion detector up here in the top. And, well, game board-like elements to it, in a tic-tac-toe kind of way. Radiant lines reaching for the ground, copper detail, and more copper up here, working their way around. This is enameled copper around the motion detector. And finally, the liquid effect itself. It does a splash, and then it does a gradual bend. And at some point, a more gentle splash. This is a piece I called Blindside. It was the first piece I made after I moved to Whidbey Island in 1987. That panel with the lights, I'm told, came from NASA, and it was used to develop hand-eye coordination for astronauts. Then I brought it to life using a sequencer from a really old vending machine. Under the hat, we've got uh, an eye patch that covers the motion detector, but the uh, eye that you can't see very well here moves about and scans the room, and it's a little creepy. So I made it with plaster over an armature, and then I airbrushed it. Not the toughest material. Here it sits for years and years, pretty much forgotten uh, out in the back of the wood shop, but back still works. So that concludes uh, the pieces that I'm going to include in this video, and uh, thank you for watching.